my needle drops, it's Anthony Fantano, the internet's busiest music nerd. Lit. Before I get into this review, I want to say there are a couple links down there in the D-Box, a new video from the Superhumanoids, a review I did of the new Arcade Fire album on another website, and also a picture of a flyer of a concert where I will be a judge. It's a battle of the bands. It's in Jersey City. Go. Oh, 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 okay. So, did you think I was actually going to go through this year without talking about this album? Did you? What's wrong with you? I would hope that after 15 albums and being one of the most familiar faces in heavy metal that Iron Maiden would need no introduction. And I'm not going to write an introduction, simply because I want to be brief. Iron Maiden is a band that takes its themes, takes its concepts, its lyrical content very, very seriously, and this LP no exception. This album runs a gauntlet of songs about space, whether it's exploring it or being stranded in it, and there are also a lot of themes about going home, missing home, missing loved ones, just kind of being away from where maybe you're used to being. And Iron Maiden takes their sweet f time talking about this stuff too. This LP is almost an hour and 20 minutes, which I read on Wicked, Wicked, Wicked. Wikipedia is the longest Iron Maiden studio effort to date. There is a reason for this, and it is not extra tracks. There are 10 songs on this thing. Iron Maiden, following 2006 as a matter of life and death, have fallen deeper in love with the concept of the intro. Only several songs on this LP actually kind of get on with it. So if you're looking for Iron Maiden kind of lean and pared down and straight to the point, you may be sadly disappointed with this album. But if you're patient, Iron Maiden actually goes through some pretty interesting intros, whether it be interesting musically, like on the first moment of the LP, Satellite 15, with just this really electronic, futuristic sound. But then there are also some moments where it seems like Iron Maiden is just doing an intro for the sake of setting up the story that plays itself out in the lyrics. Doorbell. So even though it may take a few minutes for these tracks to get started, there's still a lot of, pay attention to this word, a lot of vitality in the songwriting. Iron Maiden hardly shows any age in this respect. When the band needs to, they use their speed. When they need to, they use their solo power. There's still flash to this music, but the band really is emphasizing songwriting and progressiveness over just showy musicianship. The slower moments aren't bad either though, like the track Coming Home has a really fantastic hook, and that song sticks with me every time that I listen to it. And some songs overall I'm really just not enjoying, and I'm sad to say it's mostly because of Bruce's vocals. I don't know if there were outside factors involved in this, but Bruce sounds a little bit strained on some of these tracks when he starts to reach in his upper register. Could have been an off season, could have been maybe a lack of studio time, but I think some of these songs could have done with some extra takes. One more gripe I have with tracks like Mother of Mercy or Starblind, it's almost as if Bruce isn't really singing, but kind of trying to channel his inner thespian and kind of acting out the song, but I'm still happy to say and report that I feel Iron Maiden is still making music that is powerful, that means something. They're definitely showing some signs of aging a little bit, but I still think they've got it. The band still has good taste. But if I'm going to be honest with you, I have to say that this album still is in no way as thrilling or as riveting as Peace of Mind or Power Slave or even Killers. There may be some really hardcore metal fans who say that, oh, Iron Maiden isn't making any good music anymore, they should stop, they're f***ing all over their legacy. I don't think that's the case. Iron Maiden is still making music, and because of that, they're still relevant as a metal band. Their music isn't lost in the past, it's not forgotten, and it's because every so often we have something like this to talk about. I'm feeling a light to decent six on this thing. Yeah, I'm a little past being on the fence. It was okay. There were several songs that mm, had me going, but... I wasn't anywhere near really hating this. What do you guys think of this LP? I know there are some Iron Maiden fans in there somewhere, so let me know. What do you hate about it? What do you love about it? And why? Anthony Fantano, Iron Maiden, The Final Frontier, forever.